Talbert. Talbert, good to see you. Y'all come on in and have a seat. <laughs> and the Honorable Bill West, I see Bill coming in. We have a, a somewhat lengthy schedule, and I, I, will, I will tell you before we get started, I'm so happy to be here with y'all, and this is going to be, I think, a uh, most valuable experience for all of us, the good and the bad. So um, I'd like to, without my gavel, Bill, and the hammer you gave me, I'm getting it coated with a, a, a finish so it'll stay together. Okay, I want to call the, uh, the meeting March 5th, 2012 to order. And we have, uh, I'd like to, to uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. Second. Everyone in agreement? Say aye. 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 The agenda is approved. Um, I've got uh, Lyman Whitehead's going to do the invocation, but at 10:30, I received an email that, and I talked to Rich and others about this. I know times of an essence, but this is important. Uh, Lyman, I'm going I'm to pass the second part off to you. This is from Dan. Captain Dan Ekstrom, who's also our Lexington County Public <coughs> Judge. I'm going to read the first paragraph, and Lyman's going to read the second. He says, Steve, I would like to attend the executive committee meeting this evening, especially since it is the first executive committee meeting that you will call to order as chairman. However, I am currently underway on the guided missile destroyer USS Cole. You will recall this is a Navy warship that was the target of an Al-Qaeda suicide attack in the Yemeni port of Aden on October 12, 2000. As I approached my retirement from the U.S. Navy Reserve, the Navy honored me by extending my orders to be the senior officer aboard during this brief period of sea. Hmm. Lyman, if you'll come up with the second paragraph and then lead us in prayer. Early, <clears throat> early during this, mo <clears throat> this morning, during the ship's navigational and security brief, the commanding officer asked me to address the officers and crew. I told him the great honor it was for me to serve in what may be the most famous U.S. warship since World War II, and that I was especially honored to be their shipmate. I also thanked them for their selfish, selfless service. This meeting was held in the exact spot where the terrorist explosive blasted 40 by 60 foot hole in the ship, killing 17 of our American sailors. As I reflected on the ultimate sacrifice of those shipmates, I also remember those of you who meet tonight for your unmatched patriotism and for your dedication and commitment to promote, restore, and sustain the historic fabric of our nation. God bless you all. The Honorable Judge Dan Ekstrom. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great country. We thank you for the county and the state we live in. We ask that you be with Judge Ekstrom and his honor that has been bestowed upon him. We ask that you be with our other military, especially those in harm's way, be with our families, particularly those families that are here and carrying on while they're away protecting us. We ask <clears throat> that you help us to get back to the Judeo-Christian constitutional government that this country was founded on and to help stop all this anti-Christian movement that's taking place from within. Now guide and direct us through the coming days and through the rest of this meeting. In thy great son Jesus Christ's name, we ask and all God's children said, Amen. 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 choose to be a common man, it is my right to be uncommon. If I can seek opportunity, not security, I want to take the calculated risk to dream and build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to barter and send him for dole. I prefer the challenges of life to guaranteed security, the thrill of fulfillment to the state of calm utopia. 
I will not trade freedom for bene beneficence, nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before, my mas before any master save my God. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefits of my creations, to face the world boldly and say, I am free. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you all have a copy of the agenda, and if there's no objection, uh, the agenda will be approved as submitted. Okay. Uh, we have a number of elected officials, and I've asked uh, for those to be identified instead of me reading through the entire list. Uh, Megan Hutto. Uh, Megan, you here? Would you stand up? Megan is a candidate for the first district uh, county council. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Dee Dee Vaughters, uh, State Senate District 26. Dee Dee, I don't think anyone would recognize you. You want to stand up again? No, I just, I'm just kidding. Everybody, everybody recognizes you. Wes Howard. Wes? Uh, Rich Bolton. Does anyone recognize Rich? No. Rich, you want to take this seat back over? Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Katrina Sheila. Katrina, where are you? Okay, Dwayne Naka. Dwayne? All right, let's give these candidates a hand, folks. You know, I've heard comments on the next list I'm about to read, but it, it is important because if you're an elected official, as I still am in the city of Casey, it is important to get some recognition. Um, and I do have some ideas for next month, a little different twist, and we'll talk about those later. But I'd like to recognize uh, Lexington Treasurer Jim Extra. Jim, let's give Jim a hand. <laughs> Lexington County Solicitor Donnie Myers. Donnie? Uh, Senator Ronnie Cromer. Ronnie? Now, I'm going to add a little bit to this next person. He's a, he's a special person. This is uh, one of the most highly educated law enforcement officials in the country, my understanding, is uh, Sheriff Dr. James R. Jimmy Mess. <laughs> Representative Mac Toole. Mac? Lexington, Lexington County Auditor Chris Harmon. Chris? Chris has a one-year-old baby, believe it or not, he's having to deal with every every night. Uh, Registry of Deeds, Debbie Gunner. Debbie? And Butch Wallace, on, on behalf of Congressman Joe Wilson. Butch? If there's if there's no objection, um, the treasurer will ask that it be, a, be approved as submitted. Okay. It's approved. Um, approval of minutes. I sent those out for February. If there's no corrections, additions, deletions, the minutes will be approved as submitted. Okay. The minutes are approved. Officers' reports. Now notice the officers have changed. We we I got a call just an hour or so. Um, Tabra, I'm, I'm thinking your sister really is is sick. Uh, but she's not here. Uh, well, the other one is at the beach. But uh, while I'm talking about steer, steering committee, I'm going to make an official statement because I understand something's out here been discussed. I'm not going to be calling names, but the steering committee is an executive session. So I just want to let everyone know that information in the steering committee is an advisory capacity to the chairman, and I don't, I don't, I don't want information flowing out without everybody knowing about it. So that's all I'll say about that issue. Um, office report to us. Summer's not here. Um, Tom, April 21st, you want to talk about the convention? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I have is the uh, conventions coming up. The uh, state convention, which we've already announced, will be May 19th, and the Silver Elephant <coughs> Banquet will be the evening before. 
<coughs> sorry, then we have uh, our primary on June 12th. Tony Denny is uh, chairman of the district convention that will be upcoming. The, the state chairman Connolly recommended all of them be held in April and uh, Chairman Denny is tentatively planning for Saturday morning, April 21st. He'll give us, uh, he'll give us more solid information as it's tied down. We will need from our county probably two people to assist with registration and credentials and uh, one or more one or two more people to uh, count ballots after it's over. Uh, the, the, the ballot counters should definitely not be running for national delegate and probably that's true of the credentials also. That's it. Okay. Thanks, nice John. Uh, Mickey Lindler has a, Mickey, you want to talk about your membership letters and some other things? Sure. Um, on the poster board here, uh, we have a list of all who are members. Their membership forms underneath. Now, we're going to send out about 300 of these letters. They're going to every precinct officer, every officer of the party, every elected official, every former members. And it says, you've served us well and we'd like to offer you another opportunity to serve by becoming a paid member of the party. And we list the things that we do, the parades, um, the scholarships, um, the newly formed RAC committee that the members can um, have input and guest at these meetings. So as you know, that is our only way of raising money is our membership. So um, if you don't see your name on the list, there's forms underneath, please fill it out and give the check to our chairman. Yes. Okay. Anything else for this is? The, the, okay, Carla. Carla's going to talk about the parade meeting. Um, I um, have been asked to chair the parade committee, and so what we'll be doing is going down the list of the various parades and events that will be occurring between now and Election Day, and I will be working with the district chairman to, uh, to help them get um, the parades in their districts organized so that they can um, appear in the parades for the county party. Okay, thank you, Carla. There's a uh, number of other tasks. If someone wants to volunteer to help on some of these events, if you go to the website, I've updated virtually everything on the website except for the donate button. And I'm not, from what I can tell, the donate button really never worked. And we will eventually get that. Um, and let's see, since we, we talked about the treasurer, we'll be that, at that point in a minute, we may uh, be making some adjustments with the treasurer soon. Um, but go out to the <laughs> electionofgop.com site, take a look at the committees and what's happened. And I've, I've done a good bit of updating there. If you see any uh, changes that need to be made, let me know. Um, I'll get those made as soon as possible. And at some point in the future, we will be disseminating those duties out to other people. And that was the original intent. Well, next is uh, the, the part of the number eight. What I really look forward to is something I ran on when I was elected chairman. That's the RAC committee, Republican Adherence Committee, um, the overview. And I spent actually probably a good bit of a morning sitting there with, with a napkin writing different versions of this or this uh, uh, oath of office and, and trying to actually, an oath may not be the best word to use. It could be a creed or another statement. But they're trying to boil it down to the essence of what this is about. It's, it's a form of quality control, as I mentioned to you during the election. So I'm following through on all my promises uh, as fast as I can. Um, so we're going to have a, a swearing-in ceremony here shortly. And the RAC committee has already met. Um, Gary Taylor's chairman. David James is in North Carolina. He's not here. So that's why you don't see him. He called, he called me an hour before the meeting. Um, but. It is significant because issues that come up at the state house, at the, at the uh, local level, this, this 12 the 12-02 ordinance that a lot of you were concerned about. Um, and I met with uh, Joe Wilson this morning, and I talked to him briefly about it. We need some quality control because all of us know that, now I'm gonna stop on the speech, I won't go, I could talk to y'all a long time about this. All of us know that people who are, say they're Republicans, it, or use the word conservative or conservatism, 
that words and actions don't match. And not because they're bad people, but because that's just what happens. So this, this, is, a, this is not an answer necessarily, but it's a quality control <coughs> feedback loop. It's also a resource, a positive thing for legislators or county officials or federal officials. So that's my overview statement. And I would like to recognize um, the nine people, two of which aren't here, uh, but we've got the rest of the committee here. And I'll be sending out their names and contact information for all the paid members of this party to have the option to submit issues and, and, and governance issues to them for review. So um, before we do the swearing in, Gary Taylor, Gary, could you come up to the microphone and talk to us about the RAC briefly and what y'all have done up to this point? Thank you, Steve. It's, uh, it's an honor to, to chair this, and uh, we've met one time just as an orientation setting uh, to go over what we thought our duties were going to be and, and what we were going to try to adhere to. Uh, we're going to try to limit our oversight to legislation only, uh, not particularly uh, to any person per se, even the person that writes the bill, submits it, that sort of thing. Our, our challenge, our job is to look at the legislation, whatever it is, and judge it on its merit, whether it adheres to the Republican creed, uh, the Republican county, election county platform, the state platform, the national platform, etc. Uh, we have another meeting that will take place uh, this week on Thursday night. Uh, we're open to anyone asking us or sending us any of the legislation they want. We can look at it. What will happen is we will look at it uh, as a, a committee, um, then make a recommendation to the steering committee here. And the steering committee can either take our recommendation, alter our recommendation, or say, hey, you know, those guys must be crazy or something. I'm not sure what you'll do. But anyway, it's up to the steering committee to, to uh, weigh in on that. So, Stephen. Yeah, the executive committee. I'm sorry. I said the steering committee. The executive committee. I'm sorry. So, Stephen. That it, that's it. That's it. Let me, let me do one other thing, too, because they've had some spirited discussions online and at the first, even the first meeting. Um, and a lot of these the fine grained details of how the thing functions. I've intentionally left the verbiage of the uh, oath in a general format because as, and I've already had calls from Greenville and Aiken uh, send me an email inquiring about wanting to do something like this there. Um, but there's a couple of folks on the committee and I hate to put them on the spot, but I would like to, uh, Bill Rentiers, could you come up and talk, give us an overview of your perspective as a member working with Gary and David James, would you see as, as a function which you have been dealing with, and you can mention Chip Huggins if you want to do that legislation. Sure, thank you. Um, the, the initial meeting that we had, uh, what we did was we got together, got to know each other a little bit, and since then we've uh, gone back and forth a little bit on email. What we're doing is when it, a lawmaker can submit something to us, you can submit something, it can be a county ordinance, a city ordinance, it doesn't matter. But what we're doing is taking all of the personality out of it. It doesn't have anything to do with who the lawmaker is, you know, whether somebody likes them or doesn't like them, that's not our issue. It's the legislation or the ordinance or whatever it is. And we, uh, we, we were looking at a resolution just recently that was submitted to us by Rep Representative Huggins. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll simply compare it to uh, our national founding documents you know, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, the state Constitution, the Republican platform, Republican creed, all of those things that, that make us Republicans and who we are and about freedom and liberty uh, and smaller government. And we'll say, this conforms with Republican ideals or it, or it doesn't. And we can make a recommendation or simply just state that and send that to the executive committee and let the executive committee decide if they'll do anything about it, or what they'll do about it, or what have you. Um, I, I don't think of us as you know, a terribly you know, important uh, group, other than we're just a quality control. Um, and the acronym RAC is Republican Adherence Committee, has nothing to do with any medieval implements. 
Well, th thank you, thank you. That's, um, I'm sure these discussions, at the end of this meeting, there's, uh, there will be time for some more detailed discussions about this and actually input uh, from anyone in the audience. Um, so far, it's been legislators, and there are others that, that have approached uh, the committee about that. It's a, it's a fantastic resource if you're an elected official who wants to stay an elected official and be conservative. And if, if you want to count, accountability is coming. It's, it's a, we know that's coming. So uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Dr. James R. Jimmy Metz to come in to do the swearing in ceremony for the RAC uh, committee. And, you know, this focuses attention on the RAC and what it's about. So if you listen to in the swearing, there are copies in the back. You pick up a copy of this. This will give you not really an idea of what the RAC's all about. So if, if you'll stand. The other two members who aren't here tonight will, will be sworn in at the next meeting, which is the March 8th, Thursday. Come up, you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, in your name, I, in your name, do solemnly swear, do do solemnly swear, swear that I will review, study, and evaluate. I will review, study, and evaluate. Government issues sent to the rack. Government issues sent to the rack. Fairly and honestly. Fairly and honestly. Comparing merits and their adherence to principles. Comparing merits and their adherence to principles. Pre ops and tenants of the Declaration of Independence. Pre ops and tenants of the Declaration of Independence. United States Constitution. United States Constitution. The Constitution of the State of South Carolina. Constitution of the State of South Carolina. And general ethos of our founding fathers. And general ethos of our founding fathers. Moral, I will use my best judgment. Moreover, I will use my best judgment. Determine adherence of any particular issues. To determine adherence of any particular issues. Placed before me. Placed before me. I will do my utmost to determine. I will do my utmost to determine. Adherence of the particular issue. Adherence of the particular issue. And recommend any changes, additions, replacement, substitutions, etc. Recommend any changes, additions, replacements, substitutions, etc. To cause the particular issue, to cause the particular issue, to be more adherent, to be more, more adherent to the principles, <laughs> precepts, and tenets of conservatism, to the principles, precepts, and tenets of conservatism, republicanism, and freedom. Republicanism and freedom. Mr. Chairman, I now report that the right committee is appropriate this morning. Thank you, Sheriff Madison. <clears throat> Let's give them a round of applause, folks. <laughs> this is the, uh, from what I can tell, the first RAC committee with this process. It's the first one I can find like this in, in anywhere in the country, actually. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it, that really doesn't matter. We've got to actually make it function and hopefully be, it's a service, a public service these people are giving a tremendous amount of their time to you and to the citizens of, of Lexington County and the state of South Carolina. So, uh, Sheriff Metz, again, thank you for taking time to swear these folks in. And um, now at this time, <clears throat> we have the uh, appointment of a new treasurer. And I said discussion because until he came in, I, I wasn't sure he would be here. So he's agreed to become treasurer. And Jim, you're going to be here until what? After the 10th? I'll come back for you. I'll be the next meeting and then. Okay. Let <laughs> me get the swearing in page here. Trip. Roll down, we'll, we'll swear you. Mm -hmm. As you know, Trip Newsom was our treasurer, and he regrettably left us because he was deployed. And we prayed many prayers for you and for your family, and we doubly delighted that you're back safe and are willing to accept this responsibility. Trip, 
but if you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified. According to the Constitution of this state, to exercise the duties of the office to which I, I have been elected, appointed, and that I will, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. So help me God. I hereby declare you duly elected and sworn to perform the duties of the office to which you have been appointed. Let's give him a round of applause. Tripp is a CPA. He's doing now. This tax time, so you can imagine. I said, I said, Tripp, I've got some tax I need you to, to do. And he looked at me kind of, kind of glazy eyed. <laughs> and I actually, well, my wife spent the last several days getting taxes into our account, so. Everyone swamped, but I appreciate your service and look forward to working with you, Jim. Uh, thanks for all you've done. And, uh, you know, if the auditor turns up something bad, we'll come visit you in jail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll volunteer for that. Okay. Uh, old business. Okay. Since there's no old business, uh, we'll, we'll move on to new business. Oh, business. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, as you know, the the um, um, lawsuit against the senators was withdrawn, and last week the judges heard the lawsuit for three House members. I mean, for the House members. I'm sorry. They have promised us a ruling by March 9th. If it goes. Our way, we don't know if the other side can appeal or not, right, Matt? That's up in the air. But we will be going on with the filing. It was posted in the paper on time, in the Chronicle. Um, I'll be passing around a sign-up sheet. Um, if um, y'all, Gary, will you pass this around? We're doing it in four-hour shifts. Um, if anybody can help us, we'll be filing at Shoney's on Airport Boulevard. They're giving us a private room at the back. And um, the chairman volunteered after a little bit of discussion that we that the party will leave us either um, let us have breakfast or lunch at Shoney. So we thank you for that. So if you want a free lunch or breakfast, please sign up and help us with that. The sign up sheet's going around. Thank you. Some of you may know that location as the home of the Casey Mafia. I just want to tell you, so, so you know already where it is. Um, but the business has they've been great to uh, make that room available. And um, some of you may want, I, I will tell you, some of you may wonder why we're doing it there. It's, it's, it's because we're still meeting at, at our official headquarters, but because there was a, the appearance of impropriety with some of our candidates running against each other, the state office recommended that we have it at a location. Chad Conley said that that's what he used to do is have it at, at a restaurant, public location. So I, I talked to uh, several other candidates. They said, that sounds like a good idea. So that's, that's one reason we're having it there. Okay. Um, one other thing, We've, we have distributed the disc to all announced candidates. We've got all of 39 covered now. And somebody announced tonight running for council. So if you come forward, we have a disc for you of all the registered voters in South Carolina, compliments of the party. Lexington County. Lexington County Council, I'm sorry. Anybody else that did not get one? Thank you. That's okay, it. any more old business? Mickey, are you sure? That's it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, new business. Rob Watts. Rob? Good evening. Have to bear with me a minute. I was running a little bit late, so I might be huffing and puffing up here from running up those steps. But um, <coughs> most of the weather. Uh, I'll be real brief tonight. Um, something that has been kind of kicked around for quite a while has been something that we I thought was enough mm -hmm. kicking around. Let's finally talk about it a little bit. And that is a uh, Lexington County Republican Party candidate pledge. So I kind of like to present this to you tonight. Uh, it's nothing controversial. It's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Matter of fact, I'll read it to you real quick. It says, 
as a candidate, candidate for the Republican nomination for, insert party office there, in Lexington County, I have hereby pledged that I will uphold the ideals of the Republican Party as set forth in the Republican Party platform, <coughs> excuse me, as adopted by the conventions of the South Carolina Republican Party and the Republican National Committee. Furthermore, I affirm my commitment to the values and principles of the Republican Party, and I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States of America. Again, nothing controversial. This, honestly, shouldn't even be necessary. But unfortunately, a lot of us know that it is. I should also say that we're not requiring that anyone sign. We can't do that. I would not be for requiring someone to sign. But what we can do is recommend it. We can recommend, please sign this. Again, you don't have to. We're not demanding anyone do so. So this is just of my opinion, and I know of many of you in here, that this is something we should do. Because then we have your written word. Again, if you choose not to sign it, we're not going to hold that against you, or I'm not going to hold that against you, at least you're being honest. I understand that. But if you do sign it, and then you go a different route, we have your written word. We have your promise. So you show us what your word is really all about. All we're asking is that you uphold this. The same thing that each of, or I should say each of us, most of us here that were convention delegates voted to say this is what we stand for. This is what the Republican Party stands for. Nothing controversial. We all agree about this. And, and again, I should also mention that uh, as part of this, if you choose to sign it, because this is just like any other pledge that any other group puts out there. For example, you have the pro-life pledge in, in Iowa. Newt Gingrich signed it, then he added a two or three page addendum to it. You're free to do that. You're free to say, I understand what you're saying. I agree with you in principle. However, this is some of the things that I'd like to clarify. These are some of the things that you know, I have issue with. Then we have it right there. Everyone's being honest. We should know who we're voting for, not just talking points, action. So Mr. Chairman, I present this to the committee here. Okay. Um, this is an issue that's on the table. Um, do any any more comments about this issue from the floor? Would, you, would you explain to us why no, what State no. Party told us that if, if this has to be posted, it has to be public knowledge, whether you sign it or don't sign it, it's out there. Okay. Would you? Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, before we do that, I'd like to make sure there's no other comments or from, in terms of new business related to this topic. Any other comments from the floor on any other positions? Ed. Yeah. In general, I don't necessarily disagree with it. However, you're going to have a hard time getting 100% of candidates to agree with 100% of the Republican Party platform. This feels a fair bit to me like passive coercion. No, absolutely not. The reason why I say absolutely not is, again, I just said. That if you let him finish, I understand what you said. You said that they're not being forced to do it. That's why I call it passive. Because feeling you're going to leave with everybody, like you said, this is going to be out there. Everybody got to know who signs and who doesn't. All that. It's passive coercion. Ed, I'd like to uh, entertain a, a, a motion for further discussion on this and limit the discussion to uh, 15 minutes maximum. So do we have a motion? Do we have a quorum, Mr. Chair? Well, let's, let's, let's find out. Okay. Let's see if we have a quorum. Amy Sterry, Larry Wiedekin. Here. Uh, Bar Rope One, Dave Wilson. Dave. Okay. Um, Bar Rope Two, Joanne Busby. I know Summer's not here. How about uh, Proxy for Summer? Uh, Bethany? Proxy? Glenn? Okay. You have it signed. Please present it, please. Are you? you Glenn, are you, are you, you, are you the president? Proxy. You're the president. He didn't need it. He doesn't need to sign. Okay. Lloyd Carlson. Carlson. Uh, okay. Uh, Ron. I saw Ron Kilderman. Ron right here. here. Eric Ekstrom, Eric, not here. Okay. Um, I'm here, of course. Uh, Cynthia, Lamplin, Cynthia, you here? 
Cynthia, I don't remember seeing her. Okay. Uh, I know Don Starkey. Don. Ty Campbell. Ty. Yeah, we speak Wayne Thomas. Wayne. Lyman's here. Casey Williams. Casey. Deborah Windsor. Debbie. Uh, David Elam. David. James Bartley. James, I saw James in the back. Okay. Douglas Ford. I think I saw Douglas. Okay. Martin Bradbury. Mark. James. Jim Hanks. James. Right here. Dale Simpson. Fred Taylor. Fred. Uh, Garrett Mandible. Garrett. Tommy Windsor. Here. Here. James Donlan. James. Douglas Swafford. Douglas. Ronnie Wood. Ronnie. Carolyn Church. <coughs> Delita Price. Did I get that right? Randall Page. Randy. Here. Wes Iris here. Uh, Perry Kimball. <coughs> Perry. Sharon Whitaker. Yeah. Uh, Debbie Griffin. Yeah. John Gramley. John. Matt Gates is on the list. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thomas Kramer. Thomas. Here. That's now we're down to our president now. Okay. Lee Fowler. Lee. <coughs> Yeah, I'm going to go on. Yeah, we're still going. Yeah. Uh, Lee Fowler's not here. I, I, saw, I know I saw Jackie here. Jackie's here, but not Lee. Okay. Gary Taylor. Okay, Gary's here. Mary Carr's here. Corey's here. Richard Hook. Richard. Russ Wheat. Russ. Terry Stark is not here. Okay. Rob Watts here. David Busby. David. Uh, Brad Lindsay, Brad, Craig Caldwell, Craig. Y'all help me on this one. William Dubrowski, okay. Ann Ingle. Here. Okay, Ann. Thanks, Ann. You're welcome. <laughs> Margaret Gamble. Here. Uh, Peter Sercer. Right here. Thomas uh, Lee Candidate. I should say Lee. Katrina's here. Um, Beverly Cease. Joey Derby, Ed Boyle, George Hardy, George Hardy. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Jeffrey Matthews, April Hildra, Mike Green's here, Mickey's here, Betty Coon, Betty, Ed Hartley, Ed, did you make it tonight? Thomas Campbell, Tom Campbell, Carla Hardy. Oh. Bruce Molly, Bruce. Uh, Dennis Nelly. Ian Headley, Ian. Glenn Miller. Thomas Crow. Deborah Kilderman, I know Deborah's here. Even if we can't say that. Okay, let, yeah, Larry Mack, Larry, David Borman, Robert Lampley, Janet Starkey, Joyce Mice, no, she's out. Marcus Steele, George, George Burback, George. Preston Baines, I think I saw Preston, still here. James Ham, James. David James, he's out, I know he's out in North Carolina. Sheena uh, Havens, Sheena. Jacob Cook. Catherine Bradbury, Catherine. Mia Howard. 
Barbara Lebor, author of Burn It, Don Roy, Susan Ackerman, Susan Ackerman, Susan. Lindsay Helms, Ted Z, Jerry Howard, Otis Smith, uh, J. Carl Jordan, Sherry Kimball, Robert Suggs, Sheriff Metz, Bill Krecker, Elizabeth Kramer, Julia McRae, Grady Merritt, here. Grady's here. Here. Okay. Fred. Fred Kerr. Fred Carr. Fred. Butch Wallace. Butch is here. Rich Bowen. Patricia Wheat. And uh, Alan Starkey. Tony Denny. Tony, I think I saw Tony He's come here. here. Okay. Okay. James Snell. Thomas Wilson. Gene Fusco, Virginia Ellisor, I saw Virginia in the back. Okay. Bill Rentiers, Angela Cromey, Cromaney, Chester Irwood, Chester, Tom Tommy, that's here. Robert Killian, Hold it down. Mary Soul, Roxanne Wilson, Debbie Summers, Burke Holland, Frank Barrett, yeah. Jerry Williams, Alicia Campbell, Chester Sansbury, Doug Lawhead, Doug. Okay. Did you call out Brooks as an executive committee? Yeah, I did. And only one can be convoked? Right, only one can vote. Yeah. So look at that list, Paul. I'm sure we can overlap. Mr. Chairman, if I could, yeah, I know it's rules and everything, but for this type of position, unless there's a complaint by someone adequately looking for this, can we pass and go on with something else? Yeah. I'm happy with uh, the young man right here who's going to be our new treasurer. Well, he's, he, he was just appointed and sworn in. Um, so we're looking. Quit talking and pay attention. You don't know what's going on. Right. Well, okay, we've got a four. We've got 33. And, and we don't have deep because with the executive division of the president's right now. We're good. Okay, so we have a four. So, um, okay. Go to step the microphone there, Rob. Sorry, uh, Ms. Boyle's question had to do with passive. Um, what? How did you return it? Turn it? Exactly. Um, two things about that. One is I don't intend for this to be that way. Two things, uh, or I should say, the first thing would be to the elected officials in the room. This is not a thing where we're try I'm trying to, or, or the people that are behind me on this. Or trying to get you. I'm sure most of you, I, I saw Representative Tool here, I know I saw Senator Cromer, most of you would say you have a conservative record and you'd stand on it. And you should. All we're saying is make that argument. That's all we're saying. We're just saying make that argument. The second thing is, <coughs> excuse me, just like I mentioned the uh, New Gingrich pro-life uh, pledge, where he added a three-page addendum or two-page addendum, whatever it was, basically he said, I agree with what you're saying in principle. However, on these specifics, we need to clear the air. Let's talk about it a little bit on this. I have no uh, opposed, uh, uh, opposition to that. And again, this is just a blueprint. We're, we're welcome to, to edit this, but this is not meant to be controversial. This is the same thing we all say we're going to stand on anyway. It's the same thing that we, we talk about all the time. I know at one point, Chairman Eisenberg just carried around with him in his, in his jacket pocket. And he pulled out and said, look, this, it's not that controversial. It's what we all say we agree on. As all of us as Republicans say, this is what we believe on. There's nothing controversial in here. There's nothing from... Look, Rob, you have, you have 30 seconds. Well, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just yes, end it on that. I don't mean this to be a controversial thing. I just thought it was something we should discuss. Okay, Rob. Thank, thank you. Yes, sir. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this what elections are supposed to be about? We talk to our candidates, we ask them their viewpoints, they mm -hmm. tell us, and if they lie to us, we throw them out in the next election? I agree, but this kind of does a little bit to the next step. And, and this is something that I don't want the executive committee to pick candidates. I don't want that at all. Because I, I think that's a terrible idea. The voters elect the county should pick their mm -hmm. candidates. What I'm saying, though, is that we just give everyone a, a, a platform to stand on. We just tell them, this is what we're asking of you. This is nothing new. You don't have to sign it. If you don't want to sign it, fine. Will your, if, will your, candidate, will your opponent sign it and maybe use it against you? That's not, that's not up to me. That's your opponent's business. That's your business. It just sounds like an intellectual purity test. Mm -hmm. that we're Where does it stop after that? Who starts making Then I would move. Then I agree with what you're saying, or I understand what you're saying. Then I would just move that at the next convention we abolish this. Well, let's. Uh, yeah. Listen. No, absolutely not. What they're doing is absolutely ridiculous. What they're doing is trying to say, "Hang on, I'm answering a question." I'm in. Okay, let's 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 end end this good. Rob, thanks for the presentation. Okay, let me Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, uh, good suggestion. Recognize your, your name before you address the we're We've, uh, let, me, let me do this formally. Let, let, let me entertain a motion for a uh, five minute maximum discussion, a continued discussion with the current speaker. Do I have a, can I get a motion for that? If, okay, just a second. Okay, uh, raise your hand if you're in agreement for five more minutes. Okay. Passes. Mr. Chairman, and we have a uh, we don't have a uh, motion for this, do we? Are we going to vote on it tonight? The motion is still out of discussion. Well, it's currently it's we didn't have a motion in a second. What? Well, yeah, we had a motion to ask for a motion. Uh, okay. Entertain the motion for discussion. Was there a second? Yes, there was a second. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, it is it is no secret that we are a divided party. It is no secret that there are probably nobody I know that adheres to every single tenant in that platform. I know I don't. Sure. Proudly, I say I don't. Sure. I don't think anybody in this room adheres to every single issue. But we live in the real world. The people who sign it will use it as a hammer to beat over the head of those who don't. Those who don't would use it as a hammer to beat over those who do. Any candidate that votes 100% of the way I do, or even Steve Eisen, should not be an elected representative. They're not representing the people. Any candidate who will tell you that they know how they are going to vote on an issue, no matter how far off in the future, is doing one of two things. They're either sorely, sorely mistaken, or they're telling you what you want to hear. That is a divisive thing. We don't have to look any further than what happened last month at two of our elected officials were in this room where they were literally screamed at, called a tyrant. I was never more ashamed of being associated with this party than I was when people in this room got in the face of our elected officials and scream at them. Well, I should, I should, I'm, I'm not sorry. finished. Go ahead. This is a we will declare open season on every candidate that we have, the whether they sign it or not. That's not what this party is all about. A lot of people in this room like to talk about freedom and liberty. This is not freedom and this is not liberty. We are making it plain to people that if you hold a view different than someone else, you're no longer welcome here. That's a mistake, and it, this this really is a slippery, slippery slope. That once we start, we can't go back. It's not very far from this to what they did in Lawrence, and in Lawrence they basically disqualified 80 percent of the people in that town. This is the first step to doing this. There is no way this is a good thing for this party. It is in no way it's good for this county, and it's no way it's good for this country to have loyalty oaths, which is what that is. We used to make fun of the Democrats for proposing litmus tests, and that's what this is. Walter, your turn. Okay. Ms. Wellen presents a ton of valid points, and I would agree with them most of I was not here last month. Had I 
been in the room when someone was yelling at an elected official and uses the word that he used. Two minutes. If, Two minutes if you were at, if you were that person, I condemn you. You should not have done it. And I agree with what he said. I would be embarrassed for you, because obviously you have no uh, decorum yourself. What I'm saying, this has been compared to Lawrence County twice. No, and I will openly say on the record, for anybody here who wants to write it down, take a picture, it's on camera. <coughs> the thing in Lawrence County, I haven't read the whole thing, but the, what I have read about the thing in Lawrence County is an abomination. And, it, and, and I'm not afraid to say that, I, I'd be willing to say that uh, some people on some lower intellectual levels wrote it. Because here's what you're doing, and I agree. I have no, I, I, I'm not in favor of loyalty oaths. I'm not in favor of saying you have to do everything the exact way. Yeah, I read this thing today. For, for multiple times. You want to hear, let me point out some of the things I disagree with on it. Off the, off the uh, gambling. If you want to run out and spend all your money at the casino, that's your business. If the state wants to do a lottery, okay, that's fine. According to this, that's not right. So again, I'm not saying that it should be 100% loyal to exactly what it says. We're humans. That's not going to happen. This is just a common sense thing. We have, the fact of the matter is, we all know that this is geared towards uh, a, a, a group of individuals or a group of people, and, I, and I'll go a step further with what you said. A lot of people in this room do like to use the words liberty and, a lot, and, and, and things like that. They have no idea what the words mean. But if you don't agree with them 100%, you're wrong. I'm not saying that. I want to go ahead and differentiate that right now. I am not saying that. All I'm saying is that we have candidates out there 30 seconds that aren't holding up to what our conservative message is supposed to be. And look, I didn't intend for this to set off a uh, a firestorm like it has, and, and, and Mr. Wellman and I agree on, on a lot of things, and I don't want uh, him raising his voice to me like that. I feel hurt. No, I'm kidding. I really I don't. But uh, <laughs> my point being is that this it's, isn't really supposed to be all that controversial. It's just a common sense thing. In my opinion. 14. Our time is done. I don't have to go about doing this, but I think when you give everybody a copy of this, table it, Come back and talk about it. it, it, it is, is that, are you making a motion? Well, let, before, before you do it. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so we have a first. We have, well, can, can I, before you do a second, can I say one thing like I learned from the state party about this? Everybody? No? Okay. Is it a motion to lay on the table? Point of order. Mm -hmm. The table motion does not get rid of it. In Robert's Rules of Order, it does not get rid of it. It postpones it. You can do, there are several things, but it does not, have, it does not absolutely get rid of it. Of, uh, it ends it tonight. It ends it tonight. It does. It ends it tonight. It does. 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 It's not the table, it's not amenable, requires a majority vote, can't be reconsidered. So we have a motion and a second. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's take a vote. Uh, raise your hands if you're prepared to put it on the table and stop debate. Keep your hands up a second. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just uh, executive committee, okay? Just, just executive committee. Nobody else. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's, it's, it's been tight. Very good. Sorry. Thank you for your time. Okay. I, I, I want to I want to mention one one thing for some of you who because. I didn't, you know, personally, I didn't think I, I didn't think it was a big deal myself. But I wanted to bring it before the executive committee. I, I talked to the state office this afternoon, just to let you know, because of what happened in another county, um, what what could have been done, which you still can do outside the purview of this party, is you can get the email from those candidates that file after the filing date and send this pledge to them and ask them to sign. Anybody can do that. So. And ask for accountability and publish that. That's what I was told from the legal office at the state party. And uh, anything other than that, we could have some legal problems. That's what they told me. So I want, if, if the debate had gone on, I wanted to share that with you before you voted. But it's been tabled, so that's, this is relevant. So, uh, any more new business? I think we're, there's some more new business here, I was told.
Uh, Mr. Candidate. I'd like to submit uh, a resolution draft for authorizing the public engineers meeting. Uh, I'm Lee Kennedy, the uh, Red Bank Executive Committee, and what I'd like to do is just uh, go ahead and formally authorize with the resolution the uh, Republican Adherence Committee, and this is just done to clarify everything and to uh, make sure we know exactly what it's doing and have a formal vote on it, and this will be the first reading. Uh, whereas the uh, Lexington County Republican Party is a grassroots organization formed from the responsible individuals in this county who care enough to take action and responsibility for their governance, and uh, whereas being a grassroots citizen organization representing the Republican Party here in Lexington County, being the voice of the party in our county, it is not only our right but our duty to provide citizen oversight of our party's elected officials in the county and in the state. And whereas when the basic United principles of the party are not being upheld by individuals in our party. For us as an organization, remain silent regarding those violations of trust is, in the eyes of the rest of the state and the country, to imply approval. Uh, resolved that in the interest of providing cons a consistent procedure for the county party to more effectively call for our elected representatives to adhere to the party platform and to stay within the boundaries of the state and federal constitutions and our unalienable rights, uh, we authorize the formation of a nine-member committee entitled the Republican Adherence Committee RAC, is, you know, appointed by the chairman to review issues, legislation, and the political actions of elected officials, and resolve that the purpose of this committee is limited to determining adherence of any particular issue and to either recommending disapproval of or recommending alterations necessary to, to correct any legislation or other GOP party or political action that is not within the boundaries of the proper role of government based on the conservative ideals of God-given unalienable rights in our Republican form of governance and resolve that the final result of such reviews is to, upon a majority vote of the committee and a concurring majority vote of the executive committee, issue a report or press release to express the findings of the RAC and resolved that the existence of the Republican Adherence Committee will not affect the ability nor duties of the County Executive Committee, nor will it prevent the Executive Committee from taking any actions they so desire, whether those actions are based on the conclusions of the RAC or not. Any questions? Uh, Lee, I, I think one question I've heard is why are we doing this? Well, your early statement was this clarification of certain parts of the RAC that weren't clarified before. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Any other? Any other? Douglas? Yeah. Uh, recognize Douglas Ford. Well, I, I just have a question about some of your whereas language in there. Okay. The committee uh, stated at the beginning of the process that it was only about legislation. And a lot right. of your whereas language talks about individuals and the conduct of individuals. And you either are judging the legislation or you're judging the people. Right. And if we have all that language in there about the individuals, I don't have a copy of your resolution or I'll give you examples, but I've heard it. I, I don't think that's language that needs to be in there if the committee is specifically designated and formed to review legislation and not be a moral judge of how our political officials are acting because that's what we should do every year or every, every election cycle at the ballot box. We don't like the way they've acted. Vote against them. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, I see your point. Uh, I've talked this over with some other people and uh, that I agree that's not, we're not going after like censors we've done before. That's not the purpose of the RAC. I understand that. Uh, however, there could be instances where uh, the executive branch, for example, does something that it should not have done under state law uh, or something of that nature that we would still consider possibly be an issue. I left it a little open. If we want to tighten it up, the, the language in the resolution, that'd be fine. Mr. Chair, that's not the addition that you sent out. It's just and that's not what they were sworn to. I don't see the, the need. Let me, let me, uh, the, chair, the chair would entertain a motion to have uh, this sent out for further reading to the entire executive committee. I'll be glad to do that. Sure. Okay. Have a second? Second. Okay. 
I'll raise your hand if you're in agreement with the motion to send it out for further reviews. Okay. If you'll get a copy that me electronically, I'll, I'll send it out to everyone for review at the next meeting. Any more new business? I think there's some more. I was told it's more new business. Anyone else? Okay, announcements and public comment. Okay, first announcement is about first Tuesday tomorrow. It's the Republicans from Richland and Lexington County. Um, Jim Moffstadt is going to do a little dance for us. You don't want to miss that. We have Adjutant General Bob Livingston speaking and the newly elected chair of the USC Young Republicans will be my guest, guest and she'll um, maybe work with some of us here. Um, uh, April, May, and June meetings will be the contested Republican seats from Lexington and Richland County. Um, I have an email from April McIver. She is still, um, will be a candidate for the Register of Deeds. She asked our um, um, prayer for her. As you know, she, her son died on, Jan on February 17th, so she asked me to deliver that message. Um, Dutch Fort Republican Women, March 19th, um, Leisure Center. We have our state president, Charm Altman, will be our guest speaker. And Mr. Chair, that's all my name. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any more business? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is everybody awake? Yes, sir. Everybody awake? Are ready to go now? Okay. My name is Tommy Windsor, most of y'all know me, and from 1997 to 2001, I served and proudly served as chairman of the Lexington County Republican Party. Even as a young man, I had found wisdom in the Republican philosophy of lower taxes and less government, which led me to become active as a volunteer for the Republican Party at the age of 15, and later take a leadership role in the county Republican Party. I cherish the position of chairman because it gave me a unique platform to advocate the conservative principles of our party. These days, it is easy to become disillusioned with some of the party's establishment politicians. While the GOP is certainly home to many fine <coughs> men and women who work hard to protect our pocketbooks, some conservatives, myself included, frequently find ourselves let down by the performance of some of our office holders. Those who seek office under the Republican banner pledge to advance the causes of fiscal restraint, free enterprise, and accountability. But one needn't look far to find examples of Republican politicians who fail to meet these standards. Prior to this meeting, I informed our chairman that I would be resigning as Western District Chairman of the County Republican Party, and this afternoon I submitted my resignation to Attorney General Alan Wilson, and I am announcing to everyone here tonight that I am formally announcing as the Republican nomination for Lexington County Clerk of Court. I will work every day to make the clerk's office more accessible to the taxpayers. I will have an office that focuses on openness and fairness, and most importantly, accountability. I will be a professional and full-time clerk of court. I will post my daily schedule online so that all the citizens of Lexington County will know what their clerk is doing. I will post the clerk's office budget online so that citizens will know how their tax dollars are being spent. I will run the office efficiently and make sure that your tax dollars are being spent wisely. All elected officials work for you. It is not their office, it is your office. As Republicans, we believe that taxpayer money is just that, taxpayer money. It does not belong to the government. President Reagan said, we are a nation with a government, not the other way around. And this makes us special amongst the nations of the earth. Our government has no power except that granted it by the people. 
I pledge to all residents of Lexington County that I will conduct a positive campaign that will focus on the issues and not on personalities. Furthermore, I want to pledge to all of you here tonight that I will uphold the principles and ideals of our party and to show my commitment, I want to be the first candidate to sign my pledge to do just that and I ask the other candidates to do the same. This campaign is a job interview where you will be given the opportunity to find out who among us is the best qualified to be your clerk of court. All Republicans talk about fiscal conservatism, transparency, and accountability, and returning government to the hands of the people. If they are truly to serve the public and prove worthy of the Republican label, they must match those words with deeds. I humbly ask for your prayers, your support, and most importantly, your vote on June the 12th. Thank you very much. Well, next, and I, I want to mention this to everyone, uh, the RAP committee is going to um, be open to discussing issues and have input from, from any of the members. Uh, so if some of you need to leave, you may, you, you may want to, I'm hoping you'll stay and listen to the RAP committee. Gary, would you come up and uh, open the floor up for discussions, or Corey, or any of you would come up, all of you would come up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, I just want to make a public comment and maybe a public request to the, to the members that are, are producing motion. I do appreciate them wanting to give a motion. But I would ask that they would give it to the chairman maybe in advance and that the chairman would send it out to the whole committee so we could uh, intelligently discuss these issues rather than basically almost be surprised at the committee meeting here and, and be shocked upon it and not have any piece of paper in front of us to read the motion or anything. And if the chairman, if they can forward that to the chairman and the chairman forward that out in the spirit of openness and transparency and 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 robot and liberty justice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a motion in, in a second. Was that a motion, Mike? I guess it was. Uh, that was just a. That was just a rule. Okay. Mike, right. I'm taking the information, and I, I will. If I get something like that, I'll yeah. forward it out in the future. If I, uh, there's some of this I didn't get. Some of it I, I may have, but I will. I'll get that. Uh, those. Well, that's part of the reason we have two briefings for all these motions that we have, is so that we're not surprised that, he, that we have to vote to adopt something on these Right. Briefings. Well, so well, uh, well, I'll get the, the lease uh, um, resolution out. I'll get that out to you, so don't, don't worry. Um, now, the RAC meeting. Mary Clark. Mary, Mary? Yes. I am not running for a thing. Okay? <laughs> uh, I do want to tell you that Lexington County is celebrating 100 years of the Lexington County Library System. And starting on March the 19th, there will be celebrations at each branch regarding this 100 years. So if you live close to a branch, there will be uh, something, uh, an article, I believe, that will come out in the newspaper. And you will be able to know where each of these uh, activities are being held, but on March the 9th, it's not a table, but okay. the entrance, okay. there's a bookmark down there that indicates all of the branches and the dates that they would be having their celebration. Okay, thank you. Now, for the, for the RAC committee, uh, Gary, would you come up and maybe some of the other members? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe just talking to the committee members here, what we'd like to do, and of course we'll take information, but I don't know that we need to hold up the meeting. Uh, you know, we'll be here after the meeting. Uh, certainly, we've got our names and addresses and email account on the uh, website, uh, so they're published enough. I don't, unless somebody has something really, really important, I would say you contact us and contact us through the website. And, and that's right. I, I, can, I can forward it to, to the folks here. But the other thing is, remember, you have a meeting on March 8th, right? What time is that, Gary? Uh, 6 o'clock at the Lizard Thicket on Highway Number 1. Highway Number 1. And, uh, 
I think some of the elected officials, you know, try to use this as a resource. I know you've got several elected officials that have contacted you or are going to contact you about this. So, li listen, if, for those of you here, would you give the RAC committee another round of applause? They're putting a tremendous amount of time. Thank you. Well, unless there's any other business, I want to adjourn the meeting. Thank you for coming.